We've been playing Mufasa wrong again, but this time it's turning red. Previous tournament winner Brandon DeCandio beat me in round three of Swiss with a spicy new mid-range red Fasa build, which inspired me to have a go at cracking the meta. However, today we'll be trying something new and covering two versions of the list. My interpretation and Humble's version, which takes a very different route, but is equally impressive. I wanted to show you both versions so that I can better demonstrate all the tools available to you when building Red Fossa, and the fundamental reasoning as to how two skilled deck builders and players can take decks in very different directions and still find success. First up, we have my version of Brandon's list. The only difference is that I cut a few cards to fit four Queen of Hearts to help counter the Emerald Amethyst meta that was brought on by the winner of Fair Beasties tournament this past weekend. This version is much more of a mid-range list than the more aggressive ones we've been seeing in set 3 so far. It features a lot of draw options that add a lot more resilience to the deck and allows us to ink high enough to reach our high cost cards, Be Prepared, Surfer Stitch, and Maleficent Dragon. A good red Redfasa deck will always need some ramp, and in this list we've opted for Lantern and Dot. What makes Lantern so good in a ruby heavy meta is that it sticks around after a Be Prepared is played. Along with Mufasa, this is how we counter that removal without needing to run anti-song cards like Bare Necessities. Compared to most red Redfasa decks, we actually run a lot of removal, which is what makes us so favoured into aggro and other mid-range lists. With Queen of Hearts, Peter Pan, Prince Eric, The Queen, Maui, Medusa, Maleficent, and of course, be prepared. We are certainly in no shortage of tools to control the tempo of the game while pushing out a bunch of lore through our high questing cards. And lastly, as a finisher, we have a single copy of Chernobog, who you can often play for free after your board has been wiped by a be prepared or your hand has been discarded by a whole new world. We don't really care for the effect of adding cards back to our deck as it actually dilutes the quality of our top decks but the 9-9 and free law stat line is certainly nothing to scoff at. For the mulligan, it can depend a lot on the matchup. As a mid-range deck, we want more reactive cards into faster aggressive decks, but more high questing cards into slower control lists. Two things we want in every matchup is ramp and card draw. These two things are very synergistic, as we can generate the most value out of our ramp when we can draw more cards. The lines in this deck are actually quite flexible. If you only have a Lantern, you can go straight to a Tinkerbell or Prince Eric, and if you only have Doc, you can go straight to a Mufasa or Queen. With Lantern and Doc, you could even go straight to Medusa on turn 4 to control the board. The 1-drop Queen isn't necessary in the opener, as the meta is quite slow, but shifting into Big Queen early is a great way to rest control of the board and apply some early questing pressure. Now for Humble's list, which is a much more aggro-oriented version, with the key distinction of being a 60 card deck because they're too unlucky to run non-characters. The first difference of note is that 4 copies of Lantern have been swapped out for 4 Pluto. This gives us the ability to hit the very coveted miracle opener of Pluto into Doc into Mufasa on turn 3. In the 2 drop slot we see the simple but effective Wendy Darling, a 1 free that quests for 2. The 2 drops are our backup plan for when we don't hit a Pluto on turn 1. If we do hit the Pluto, however, a very strong and aggressive opener is Mini Mouse on turn 2. Humble says they can often get 6 to 10 lore before their opponent finds a removal tool, as no one is running evasive counters in the current meta. At 4 cost, we see the return of the much beloved Hades, which is both a draw and recursion tool, allowing this deck to be much more resilient. This means we can pull back Banish Gothels and Rapunzels from our discard to draw more cards. Off a Mufasa hit, you can even pull back the Mufasa that was just banished, which can be super frustrating for your opponent. As for removal, we see a very different build philosophy that focuses on cards that have value as Mufasa hits through their passives and on play effects. Firstly, we see a drop to 2 Maui, as he's great for dealing with locations, but feels pretty bad off Mufasa. Next, we see the return of the feared Lady Tremaine, who threatens a quest 2 and removes an opponent's character, making her very tricky to play around off the Mufasa. And most excitingly, we see Hydra, which is a quest 2 6 5 with the effect whenever this character is dealt damage, deal that much damage to chosen opposing character. You can easily see how devastating this is to deal with off a Mufasa rip, and acts as a pseudo protection for the card. The last thing I'll mention is that Humble has begun to test 4 Simba in place of the 4 Wendy's as a way to protect Pluto to extract multiple turns of ramping value. That's all for today, I hope you found this useful and learned something from a contrasting comparison of two very different but effective builds of the Red Fusser archetype.
The following games were recorded before I found out about Humble's list, so definitely give that list a spin in your own time. See you all next time. Okay, we are up against Emerald Amethyst. There is a ton of Emerald Amethyst being played today, as I believe it came first in the uh, in Faya's $1,700 tournament. So I have adapted this Red Fossil list to hopefully be better into that deck. Oh, this is really interesting. I think going for a low curve is probably quite ideal here. Especially if we're going second. Oh, nice. They don't even have a one drop, uh, a turn one play, so that's perfect for us. Oh my god, they still don't have a play. Okay. Amazing. Uh, I don't know how useful Maui is going to be. But yeah, let's keep playing like this. Lantern out a queen. Okay, they, they haven't played a turn one or two play, so that's really solid for us. Uh, there's the kick cloud kicker, bouncing a card back to hand for some tempo. I mean, we're fine with that. Uh, we don't have a Rapunzel, so I'm going to ink this Clefell. We can play a bit slow here. Maybe we get out the Prince Eric just to threaten the ball. Um, uh, I don't know. I feel like going wide here is actually potentially better. So we can play a Pongo. Yeah, play a Pongo plus a Queen. Ah, uh, but if we play the Pongo now... Yeah, I don't think... Uh, this is really difficult, actually. Yeah, we probably do want to go wide. Even though I really want to keep the Pongo for later for draw. Hmm. Yeah, because we can threaten to clear more of their board with the Prince Eric, I think. And keeping the Pongo in our hand to draw more cards is probably very important. Okay, they've inked their Singing Ursula. Putting down a Queen's Castle. Yeah, so let's ink a Queen. And we can lantern out a Tinkerbell. Because we can't take out the Queen's Castle yet. We don't have enough damage for us. I mean, this is where the Maui would have been useful. I don't see Rapunzel. Uh, I don't see any of these being that helpful to us straight away. We'll keep the Rapunzel just in case we get a chance to use it. And we'll go out with the Queen. I'll send uh, one queen into the queen's castle to start off the damage, and then quest with Prince Eric. Actually, probably a mistake to quest with Prince Eric there, because now they can remove it with Kit before they play another card down. Other knows best. Are they really going to bounce the Eric? Okay, now they bounce the Kit back to hand, uh, ink something, and then play the Kit again, maybe? I honestly would have just... Uh, Use that chance to take out the Eric. Because we're, we're still going to be able to take out the Queen's Castle now. First brush. Peter Pan's perfect for that, actually. Um, so if we Peter Pan, that's free damage. We keep questing that way if we Peter Pan. Yeah, let's go for that. Peter Pan. Peter Pan's got rush. We go into the Queen's Castle. We play a Queen of Hearts. Queen of Hearts also has rush. Go into the Queen's Castle. And we don't quest with the Tinkerbell, quest with the Queen. And I think it's very unlikely. Actually, it is quite likely we're going to be able to get a draw off with Rapunzel if we can trade the, get the Tinker into something. Let's uh, ink the Pongo and just go for some more tempo here and play another Queen. Okay, we're going to bounce the Rabbit back to hand to draw some more cards because they really need some fuel to play against us. We're going to trade one for ones, but I can't get value off my Rapunzel. I am A-OK -okay with that. How do we want to play this? I feel like we just want to get a get a good good amount of threat on the board, which means either the Dock or the Prince Eric. In this case, Prince Eric lets us thread in their board more, and we don't have enough draw to really have the ramp be effective right now. Okay, Rabbit comes down, we're going to keep drawing. Put an Ursula down to see my hand, maybe discard a song. Unfortunately for them, no songs in hand. I mean, that Mufasa deck is just the, the one deck where there's almost guaranteed to be no song. Okay, Snake Mate's prayed. Then we are going to trade our Tinkerbell in, so that we take free damage, allowing us to get a full draw off a Rapunzel. So that's pretty nice bait for them to exert. Wonderful. Now we have a lantern that we can use uh, to get a second one down. Yeah, I think we're just going to quest with the Eric. We've got the tempo, so we'll keep applying the pressure. Uh, Inca Queen of Hearts, just so we can get some more tempo on board. Yeah, we got fell.
Well, yeah, they really couldn't go for the Eric trade there, could they? Although I think they should have. And just like quest with the Ursula, trade the rabbit into the Eric, and then I either get rid of the Ursula or the rabbit with the on destroy effect. Okay, well, now the Ursula clears the Eric, and we can clear the, honestly, clear the Rabbit. I, I don't want them to be able to bounce the Rabbit back to hand and draw more cards. Box comes down, bounce the Ursula back to hand, and trade into the tank. This is where the Queen of Hearts would have been nice, so maybe we shouldn't have inked it. Okay, I'm pretty okay with this play too. If we can double Lantern, Medusa, the Crab to remove it, trade the Gothel into the Fox, and then quest with Rapunzel. It comes down, bounces Rapunzel back to hand. That's probably good for us. Okay, Lantern, Lantern, get a Tinkerbell, see what card we can grab. Let's go for an Eric here, get some more board clear on board. So because we're ahead, they're incentivized to trade into our Medusa. Because uh, we're ahead, sorry. Friends, sing friends to draw more cards, refuel the deck. I guess bounce rabbit back to hand and then fox into our Medusa. This is where a be prepared would be really nice. Okay, going to draw more cards. I really do want to get rid of that Merfolk, but I think quest with the Eric is probably more important. Yeah, I think I think um, the best play here is just to go full aggression. We've almost won, so let's play a Mufasa, play a Dot, and threaten Lethal this way. Now they really just have to look for a way to bounce our Mufasa and Doc back to hand because we have lethal. Okay, we can get a Mother's Nose Best down to bounce the Mufasa back to hand. Now they have to trade into our board. So Eric's going to have a nice on banishing effect, and so they're probably going to quest with the Merfolk first before challenging into it. And every trade they make is one less law they get. So we're still super far ahead. I'll get rid of the Merfolk. Ditch would be nice if we had two cards, but because we don't, I'm just going to go for the ramp into Mufasa play. And we can draw a... We probably want uh, a wide board. So I think instead we'll go for the Eric. So now they need to somehow bounce both our Mufasa and our Tinkerbell to hand. This is why we quested with the Tinkerbell earlier, um, just so we'd be able to be one lore away from winning. And GG. That's uh, winning against Emerald Amethyst Tempo, the deck that just won the $1,700 Fair uh, BC tournament. Interesting, we have a Red Fossa versus Red Fossa matchup here. Uh, let's see who can win. Okay, so we are gonna mulligan well, everything, pretty much, I would say. Maybe keep Queen of Hearts as ink, because we really want to look for some ramp. Okay, well, we've got our, our Rapunzel line at least to draw. I guess we'll get ink one of the Queen of Hearts. I think the Congo is really not something I want to be playing on curve, ideally, right? Maybe in this scenario it just happens. Because Pongo is going to be how we trade into their dock. Yeah, so I think we think we have a Queen of Hearts. And we just go for like a, a slow opener here. So I think we beat 
spread faster by winning in value, probably, in the mirror. Oh my god, Webby Vanderduck, what? Is that just a 2-2? Two -two? Okay, well we've got pretty, uh, same, pretty much the same openers here so far. I'm quite tempted to just go for the Peter Pan here, because of the quest 2, but I think because we want to win on board control, we've got to go for the Pongo. Pongo, if it lives, at least gives us the option of getting some card draw as well. Okay, they're playing Whale Maui. Mini Mouse Surfer comes down. Now that's something we're going to have a bit of trouble dealing with. I think we go for the Rapunzel heal here. I don't think we got a uh, quest with Pongo, because if it, they heal with Rapunzel, then our Pongo is just going to get traded into. Maui's going to be really great on five here. Yep, yeah, there's their Rapunzel. And the Minnie Mouse quest for two. Okay, so I think we ink a queen here. We go for the Maui. Maui trades into the Gothel. And now we can quest with everything else to get ahead on tempo. I mean, definitely going first in the mirror is a massive advantage, but I also think our deck... What, what is that? Like a free fall? Okay, this is a free fall. Two co is it a free cost free fall? Now he comes in to trade into our Rapunzel. They don't quest with the Rapunzel here, that's really good for us, because we're expecting the trade, and then we can... Yeah, ah, perfect. Okay. I don't think we go for the Dock. I don't think we keep the Dock. We ink the Dock, and then we Medusa to take out their Rapunzel. And then we can trade Maui into their Maui, and then quest with our Pongo and Gothel. There definitely was an argument to do that to the Surfer as well, but to do it to the Surfer instead, I think it was probably the correct choice, actually, um, in hindsight. If we get a Stitch down, though, we can go for... We can aim for a, a Sing Be Prepared turn. Yeah, so I think I'm going to ink the Queen, lay down our Surfer for the draw, and then just... Quest with everything, because we want to get as much quest as we can on the board before we sing Be Prepared. So if they quest with a Mufasa, we can trade in, then sing Be Prepared. So as long as they don't top deck a Maleficent Dragon, that should be a pretty, or another Mufasa, that should be a pretty good play. Nice, because they're setting up their Maui, which is definitely something we want to get rid of. Oh, they trade their own Mufasa in. That's curious. If they get a stitch with rough, okay, interesting. Cool, so we can just go for the pretty easy play here of quest, quest, sing be prepared, and then go for a Mufasa plus Congo. And we have some card draw on the go as well. The lore counts are really tight here, so we have to be super careful. If we get an inkable card, I might just go 5 plus 4 for the extra lore. Mickey Mouse Brave Halo, that is a scary, scary card. Okay, I think in this case we just go 4 plus 4. Or we look for an inkable, uh, inkable to do Mufasa. Okay, perfect. Let's just grab the queen and ink that. Now we can hopefully still outrace <laughs> this... Four lore character because they've got six lore on the board. Even if they be prepared here, our Mufasas will trigger. You know, what? I think Mickey Mouse Brave Little Taylor actually isn't the worst card in this meta, but Maleficent Dragon's sort of just better <laughs> because it can, you know, the Mickey Mouse Brave Little Taylor only really works when you're ahead in tempo. So you're on the play and you're closing out a game. Like when they're a second in this situation, they'd rather a Maleficent Dragon. As long as that gets a one drop, one lore character, we are good. Boom, it does. And GG. Okay, we are up against M uh, Tempo Bounce. It's, uh, we won the last game. Let's see how this game goes. This is probably the most popular deck of the moment, uh, at least today, as it just won, won a tournament of the weekend for $1,700. Oh, uh, yeah, we'll definitely keep one of the queens as a shift option. And, oh uh, yeah, I think that's all we keep. 
Hmm. Double lantern, very nice. Uh, I don't think Maui's that crazy into Emerald Amethyst. Actually, maybe he is. Maybe he's better than Pongo. But we kind of want the Pongo for the draw. Uh, we don't have a Rapunzel, so I'm good to ink the Gothel. Pinocchio. Okay. That's a, it's a much more aggressive version of the deck then. Let's get a, another Lantern on board. I don't really want to get rid of any of our rush cards, so I think I'd rather ink the queen of the situation. Now we can double lantern into the pongo. And I guess trade the merfolk in and keep the discard. I'd rather keep the Peter Pan, actually. Mainly because of the quest 2 and the X3 stat line. Right, bouncing the Pinocchio back to hand to protect it, makes sense. We could go straight into a Mal here and just have it live. It's probably worth it. Live the Fox straight. We need to start racing them in law if they're going to be able to bounce all of their questers back, but we also need to control the board at the same time. Ursula coming onto the board is very scary. Uh, so let's draw a card with Pongo. Queen. Mm. Not super ideal. We can't even play the Queen this turn. Fell's not amazingly helpful either, though. Quest with Pongo. Now I can get the Peter Pan on the board. So if they want to get rid of a Pongo, they're going to have to trade the Ursa in, which will at least mean they can't sink. Or they just bounce it back to hand. Okay, well at least the Maui can trade into the Ursula now, and then Peter Pan can trade into the Maleficent. Yeah, cool. So, Maui. Maui into Ursula. And then double Lantern. Peter Pan. Into the Maleficent. And then we don't want the Peter Pan to get traded into by Merlin easily, so we definitely want to get the Tinkerbell on board. So I think we'll get rid of the Pongo. Hmm, or maybe should have gotten rid of the Queen. Get the Tinkerbell onto the board. We're not going to get super a lot of value out of Rapunzel, but I think we will get a lot of value out of Medusa, so let's grab that. Alright, we trade the Goat in. Trying to draw some cards, since we know their play just gets beat by Medusa anyway. Hmm, I definitely think we we're wrong to ink the Pongo. We should have inked the Queen. The Queen's not super amazing in this matchup. Yeah, because if we had Pongo here, we could have <laughs> landed it out and then gotten some nice card draw. Okay, we want to ink up so that we can get close to Maleficent. Full pass here. Don't want them trading their goat into anything. Goat getting around the Medusa is quite unfortunate for us. They're refilling their hand completely, so they're ahead of us on resources. Yeah, that's what I was. That's what I'm afraid of. Do we worry about the Ursula, or do we worry about? I think we have to worry about the Pinocchio. The, the quest is a lot scarier. Oh wait, can we play both? We can play both. Thank you. Double. No, we can't. I'm being silly. We can't play both. <laughs> uh, we can play the Medusa and get rid of the Pinocchio. Because we really can't accept a free law quest right now. And then Queen to make the goat tradable into by the Tinkerbell. Do I get the double mother knows best? Lucky for us, we still have a Medusa in hand. So 
So our Medusa can trade into that Ursula, and then we can Lantern, Lantern, Medusa to get rid of their Pinocchio. I think, yeah, I think we need to play out the Queen for Tempo. So we can, oh, do we? Mm, yeah, I think we do. We can still ink this Queen if we need to get to playing the Maleficent. We just ink the flame? Oh, to get the rabbit out. I see. Okay, well, I really don't want them bouncing the rabbit for more cards, so I think this is time for us to remove it. And then we can just quest with everything. Queen's Castle, so we can remove that quite easily with our Maleficent. Probably trade into the Queen here, I'd imagine. Yeah, there we go. We could just go for double Prince Eric here and just try and close out the game. I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. So trade into the Fox. Maleficent trades into the castle. And then Lantern, Lantern, Eric, play Eric, and now we are threatening to quest for a bunt. Pinocchio coming up, oh, Pinocchio and Maleficent coming down is incredibly scary. Luckily, they aren't threatening lethal. Let's see what we can grab with the tank. Nothing that helps us control the board, so we might as well. Grab the Mufasa and play it out. Now, if they top deck a goat, we just lose. <laughs> That's what entirely what this game is up to. No goat? Question mark? Goat, no goat? Oh, thank you. Thank you. No goat. Wonderful. Well played. Okay, just had an amazing game in um, the best of free mode against Red Blue. I wasn't recording. I was just going to play a few games before going to sleep, but I'm really annoyed I didn't. So uh, let's see if we can do it again. Oh my god, double lantern. I am A-OK -okay with this. I feel like with double lantern, Pongo for the draw is going to be really good. Let's try and see if we can find a Gothel. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, this is so perfect. I could not have asked for a better hand. So let's just get a bunch of ramp down and then flood the board, I guess. Yeah, I mean, we won going first last time, so it'll be more of a challenge to see if we can win going second. Okay, I think Peter Pan is what we get rid of here, because we want to keep everything draw and ramp related so that we can flood the board. If we can go lantern, then double lantern into Gothel is probably the best move here. Yeah, so we could have played that queen out, but I think I'd rather keep every other card we have. Now we can quest here. Oh, maybe we shouldn't have quested so that we can ramp. So we are going to get to be prepared one turn earlier now if they have the quill. Okay, they don't have it. Perfect. Sucks to get rid of a Maleficent, but I think that's necessary here. Now we can play the other Lantern and double Lantern a Gothel out onto the board. They shouldn't have any way of dealing with the Gefell. Not not this early, not on 4 rank, 5 rank. Unless they're running Teeth and Ambitions. It's the only way we get screwed here. Okay, Maui, that's okay. Let's double Lantern. Oh, we could double Lantern into another Gefell here so we don't waste the healed Gefell. I really like that plan, actually. Gothel. This Gothel can remove the Maui. And now, do we ink the Pongo or the Dock? I think we've, we've already got two lanterns. Let's ink the Dock and keep the Pongo for draw. 
Now we can Rapunzel Viscothel. Perfect. We are going to be able to get B prepared, so we've got to keep that in mind. Okay. Double Lantern into Pongo. Now Pongo, pay two to draw a card. And now we can maybe ink the Queen, which will let us threaten a Rapunzel here with Gothel, so we're going to feel pretty incentivized to remove that. Okay, be prepared comes down, but I am fine with that. Double Lantern into a Mufasa. I don't really want to get rid of the other Mufasa, so let's wait to see if we can get another Inkable card. Now that they've expended the B prepared, it's going to be quite hard to get our Mufasa, uh, get rid of our Mufasa, making them very sticky. They should be able to quest at least one or two times. They're having a really tough time choosing cards here, huh? Maybe I should have kept the Pongo, actually. Maybe I should have kept the Pongo for post B prepared and just played, played something else. Okay, double Lantern into another Mufasa. And again, I'm in the same predicament I was last turn, right? I think instead I would rather wait uh, for an inkable card so that we can play the Mufasa and Peter Pan out in the same turn. Okay, let's see what we get. Another Mufasa? Oh my god, we're gonna have all four Mufasas in play. That's just some insane <laughs> luck on our end. I mean, and without running Judy Hobbs, it's, you know, they have no way of dealing with our lanterns. Okay, evasive to your Gaston, that's fine. I was going to quest anyway. I mean, I guess it stops us from Peter Pan rushing it. Oh, too, ba too bad we we're not able to make full use of Rapunzel now. That's a lantern out, a Mufasa, and a Peter Pan. So we're threatening eight lore, and if they do be prepared, because uh, they can't sing it, we're going to have hopefully three full units still on the board. Oh, they can try the Gaston into one. So two, two full units on the board if they be prepared here. And if they're not running Hades but, or let it go, then we really have no good way of clearing Mufasa. Okay, here comes the be prepared. Let's see what we get. First up, we have a Maui. That's not very good. Next up, we have a Maleficent. That is very good as it quests for two. Oh, no, no! Oh! <laughs> I, thought, I thought I was can't... I thought I was cancelling the Maleficent ability. Oh, my... That's, that's really rough. Oh, it would have just been another Maui anyway. Not that big a deal. Actually, you could argue it's even better to have the Maui in our hand be used later or used as ink, especially when they have nothing on the board. Yeah, it's definitely a, a reason to play slower so you don't <laughs> click through those effects without really processing. Inking the mana. Interesting. I guess we know that we can deal with the mana super easily. Okay, there goes our Maleficent. And that is, uh, that is not a good top deck. Request here. We're in top decking mode, just hoping <laughs> that we can maybe find something that lets us draw some cards and take advantage of our lanterns to close out the game. Luckily, we haven't seen them draw many cards yet. They haven't found the Haram. Okay, there is the... Was that the third B prepared? Yep. <laughs> they really, really just top decking those B prepared. Okay, let's uh, lantern this out for fun. I mean, I think keeping the Maui as a secret is, a, is the best option here. Okay, there goes our Gothel. Got a grandma talent on the board. Oh, we have a B prepared. Okay, very interesting. It's full pass turn. Maybe they'll play something good and we can B prep it. Uh, we can play Maui and Gaston. So, uh, and Doc, sorry. So let's do that. Now we can go into the Grandma Tala to stop it from questing. Which will ramp them, but we're just going to have to live with that. And then the Doc to start threatening some quests. 
So that Maui's fish hook giving evasive is super frustrating. It means our Maui is not going to be able to threaten the Medusa, and then Medusa can threaten our dock. <laughs> Another Maleficent Dragon. They're really just top decking the best cards in my deck. That is what Red Blue is good at. Red Blue is the king of top decking. That is the highest density of uh, top end cards. Because we haven't inked, we're not able to be prepared. Let's see what Tinkerbell can grab. Oh, grabbing a Rapunzel for draw would be amazing right now. Okay, so the Queen can either be played or be used to set up a B prepared. I really want to save the B prep for like a Tomato or something, or this Hades. I feel like they're just going to quest quest and give evasive to the dragon, which means we'll definitely have to B prep. So let's quest with Tinkerbell and then. Oh, actually, we don't. We're at. Uh, we got Hades, so we don't even need to ink the queen. Perfect. Uh, why not? <laughs> let's let's attack in. Uh, be prepared. And then we can lantern out the queen. Oh, fishbone quill. That is a miss. Amazing news for us. And play Prince Eric and Queen to Fred and Lethal. The fourth be prepared. Oh my god. How many can this dude get in one game? Oh, wonderful. We get the Pongo for draw. Just what we needed. Okay, pay two to draw a card. And then let's just. Wait, can we do that multiple times a turn? Only once per turn. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's play the Rapunzel to threaten lethal. A stone comes out. They're not going to be able to be prepared. What can, what can they get? But they can get a Medusa. A Medusa would uh, take out the Rapunzel. Yeah. And GG! That's a win! We survived through all four be prepared. That is how resilient Mufasa is. Okay, we've got a match against Sapphire Steel Wheel Ramp. This should be a match we can win as long as we apply some early aggression. I want to keep the Medusa because it's really good for removing any beasts we might play. Actually, I don't think we can keep the Medusa though because we need to look for some ramp. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's do this. Keep our 1, 2, 3, 4 curve, but still look for some ramp. Okay, didn't find it. Um, Maui I kind of want to keep. We'll get rid of the Gafel because we don't have a Rapunzel. Okay, Popsicle comes out. Okay, of course now we now we have the Rapunzel. But yeah, maybe maybe we should have just should should have inked them. Uh yeah, we need to apply aggression, so ink the Maui. Queen of Hearts and keep questing. Maui would have worked better though with being able to get some Rapunzel heals off, but hopefully Tinkerbell still works with it. Okay, I guess we're getting rid of the Mufasa too. I mean, if we're up against Sapphire Steel, it's in all likelihood they're going to wheel us anyway. So I am somewhat okay with losing our draw, which is probably an argument to have kept the Maui and the Mufasa. <laughs> okay, we've got the Fishbone Quill out now. I wonder if they're going to quest with the Smee or trade in. Looks like they'll trade in thanks to the hook. Okay, yeah. Gonna have to ink for Rapunzel here, but that's okay. Play the Tinkerbell, see what we can grab. We're not gonna be able to get to the Maleficent in time, so let's grab the Queen of Hearts. We have something guaranteed to ink next turn. I think we're just gonna have to accept that the Pongo can get traded into, maybe. I'm okay not drawing cards with it, as we're probably about to get wheeled anyway. I think now that they've got the Haram set up, they're much less likely to wheel. We'll just have to keep trying to quest in their face. It's too bad we didn't get any aggressive early questers like Doc. Yeah, there's another Captain Hook. We'll keep the Surfer Stitch just in case we get a chance to play it for some draw. If they want to attack me with Hook and Haram, I'm okay denying them. Uh, drawing cards.
Okay, beast on board. Madam Medusa would be beautiful right about now. Okay, not quite. We actually can't play anything this turn. <laughs> Very unfortunate. A just quest with Mufasa, not the Tinkerbell, just to give us a chance of getting the surface stitch draw. And maybe for a chance of top decking a nice hit off the, uh, of the Mufasa. Okay, let's go. Queen. Not bad. But, I mean, it also means we're probably just going to trade the beast into it. They're looking for some other kind of answer now so that we don't have to trade beast. <laughs> Another fishbone quill. Not ideal for us. Because now we can keep ramping and still get that draw. I think about actually can't take out their Haram, which is great for them. Okay, we will take those. So, ink a Queen of Hearts, and go into the Surface Stitch for the draw. And we would like to Queen something, but it's really not worth, you know, not killing a Haram with. So I think for now, we won't do anything. Or at least be able to clear the Haram with a Maui. If they like sing or grab your sword or anything with Whole New World, then that leaves the beast vulnerable. Maybe just going for normal quest. What are we gonna what are we gonna play to deal with the board? Double grab your sword, maybe? Okay, so they're just they're just pushing for game with their resources. And maybe looking for some answers with the Gaston. Definitely time to start clearing the board. I think we'll go Maui into the Haram. Then quest with Queen. Lower the beast. Up the Tink. Tink trades in nicely. And then we'll go Stitch into the Smee. We could play Vigafell, but it's likely to just die to anything. So it's probably better just to ink it. In case we do get horny welded. Uh, searching for some more answers with the Gaston. The best answer here is double grab your sword. That'll clear everything except the stitch. Okay, they're ramping, so we might be looking at a whole new world next turn. Madam Medusa doesn't really help us there, so let's go for the stitch to draw more cards. Ooh, that's very nice. Um, it's very likely they're going to whole new world us, so I'm going to ink a queen and then keep Rapunzel as a way to draw more cards. So let's quest with the queen, lower Gaston, up Tink. Actually, we didn't even need to, because Ma Maui can just trade in. So Maui trades in, and then quest with Stitch and Tink. These 4-8 bodies are very, very, very hard for Sapphire Steel to deal with. They need single target removal like Hades or Let It Go. Or an Along Comes Zeus. But even then it's only 5 damage, so it can deal with one of the stitches, but not the other stitch. Or they need an Along Comes Zeus, but even then it's only 5. Okay, that's one grab your sword. Two grab your swords. And a beast that we can take out with Medusa. Lovely. Oh, and an inkable card. Let's go. Okay. So, first off, let's heal one of these stitches. Uh, so if I heal you, you'd still die. So let's heal this stitch. And stitch trades into Gaston. And then we play Medusa. Medusa removes the beast. And then we can quest with stitch. Okay, they're gonna ink and go for a whole new world, maybe? Yep. Tink takes out one of the stitches. Now they don't have enough ink to do anything else, so we just win. GG. Okay, we're up against Emerald Steel, this time with the music disabled. Oh, I can't believe I recorded all those games with music enabled. Anyway, let's see if we can go for a win. Um, so against Emerald Steel, we probably do need to be the aggressor, but we also need card draw 
to survive all their discard effects. So we'll definitely get rid of these Maleficents. Maybe we'll get rid of a Peter Pan too. Yeah, this looks about right for now. Try and get a two drop. Okay, Queen of Hearts works. So I guess we'll, we'll ink one of the Queen of Hearts. Go in like this. Okay, five of cannons. <laughs> so we're not gonna be able to shift queen. Uh, are we gonna need two docks? I don't think we will need two docks. Maybe we ink one of the docks. Just go for a normal queen of hearts here. Cool. Uh, ink the queen, play out the dock, quest with queen of hearts. Why is, oh, why are we on the live one? Okay, there we go. <laughs> We're back on the non-live play. Uh, maybe we did need the second, second dock after all. Ink this Queen of Hearts and play out a Pongo. Morph into Robin Hood. Gonna gain two law off that. We can't do much to clear it for now. And we get rid of our Pongo, so we can't get card draw either. So we're just gonna have to go straight into Mufasa here. As much as I would like to keep that Rapunzel, I don't think we're gonna get a chance uh, with Mufasa. I think it's better to just play uh, Mufasa, Mufasa. Okay, they've got a beast to draw cards. Wow, that's frustrating. Okay, <laughs> think that Maleficent. Play a Mufasa. We're never going to quest with a beast, so I think we just ink with our uh, quest with our Mufasa here. Okay, hopefully we get something good. Pongo. Okay, they're probably going to have to trade their beast into this, because they don't want me to be able to draw cards. Or they can just use Storm. Oh, <laughs> oh, it's so close to being able to just play these. Like we could have gotten them as hits off the Mufasa. Oh, okay, and we get one anyway. <laughs> Simmons, really unlucky draws. At least it pays off with this Maleficent. Somewhat. We're still in top deck mode. They're using small Cinderella for the cycle. Small Robin Hood. Okay. Play Tinkerbell to grab something. I think Gofell does much, so we might as well get the Queen. Then they Zeus it. Play the Queen, and we can Queen of Hearts into the, probably the Cinderella is more scary if they can shift Cinderella. We don't want them to get that for free. Okay, we made the correct decision. Uh, so the Queen can do minus four plus four. The question is, do they have a song? if they do have a song, we're going to just be able to run over our queen anyway. I mean, the Robin Hood is not even exposed. So we just have to hope they don't have a song. Okay, this is a <laughs> really awkward position for everyone involved. I'm okay questing with the Mufasa, I think. We need something to apply pressure. Whole new world. And take out our queen that way. Yeah, I think we go for a sing be prepared here to get rid of the Cinderellas and regain tempo. Because otherwise those Cinderellas are going to be quite hard to deal with. Okay. We go west with Mufasa. West with Tinkerbell. Be prepared. Sing with Stitch. Reset the board. Mufasa activates. We get to add an exerted Eric. And we could get the Chernabog down now and then go straight into the surface stitch, right? We can make that cost six. Okay, 
let's uh, let's do it like this. So we play we play the Chernobog for zero. Thank you, whole new world. And now we can ink the queen. Play a lantern. Activate the lantern. Play surface stitch to draw two cards. Wonderful. We're gonna have a hot as a steel deck. We're gonna have a hard time dealing with these high static cards. Yeah, we don't have any way to deal with the beast. I think let's just let's just keep drawing keep drawing cards. Um, yeah. Stitch, draw more cards. Wonderful. Now we ink something into play the dock. Uh, I'd like to keep Mufasa, keep Maleficent. We've got a lot of cards, so I think we can get rid of the Rapunzel at this point. Just start questing. Okay, Tinkerbell comes out. Sing Grab Your Sword comes out. Uh, we still win though. We've, you know, got plus four law. I only need plus four law and we have seven. And GG, nice. A nice clean win against Emerald Steel.